In the following video, I'm going to demonstrate the new DTM smoothing tools that we built into Enforce recently, and also the gradient shading options that have also just gone in. So to start with, I've got um, some UAV data here. And all I'm going to do to begin with is just generate uh, a grid over it, a grid of levels. So they're going to be the lowest levels on a quarter meter grid. And essentially at each grid intersection, it's going to go hunting for 50 mil around that intersection for the lowest point. Um, now, I need to make sure that I align to spacing so that essentially the origin of the grid is zero, zero. So if I do this again, or I do other data sets and I want to merge them, they're basically on the same grid. Uh, Show through cloud just lets me see them. Um, now this new option that says remesh, that's been introduced recently so that if there are any holes in the data, so it's been cleaned or someone's uh, removed areas like where there are cars or buildings or something in another software package, by doing this grid, you normally have a hole there in previous versions, but remesh skins over those holes for you. Smooth is where we, uh, or rather smooth heights, is where we uh, introduce a new smoothing algorithm. But I'm not actually going to do it here. I'm going to do it somewhere else because we've introduced it in a number of places. You can do it here, and that's absolutely fine. But I'm going to do it uh, in the essentially in the uh, lidar views so that we can see the contour change uh, more accurately. So anyway, just untick that for the moment. And I'm going to hit Preview Grid. Okay, now that that's done, I have my surface. Okay, uh, as you can see, it's a little bit lumpy and bumpy in places, but that's because we haven't smoothed it yet. So I'm just going to say Create, and we will just say, um, we'll just close down 250 millimeter grid and press OK. So now we have our LiDAR grid, or our grid, gridded surface. We tend to call it a LiDAR because that's what the original purpose of this gridded data was for. And I'm just going to modify the contour settings. So remove that one. Let's have them in blue every meter. Text offset to zero when we annotate them, and one decimal place. There they are, and I'm just going to untick the model because there's no need to see a mesh. Okay, and I'll switch to a white background. Okay, and also set that to solid lines. Okay, so here we have the contours uh, unsmoothed, as you can see. What I'm going to do now, uh, as I said, I could have done this in the 3D view automatically, but I want to do it here just to show uh, again the difference. And I'm just going to go to smooth. Okay, now that's finished, and if I just do something, sort of, just to drag the view, it will update. There we go, so we now have much smoother, much more presentable contours. So I'm going to quickly uh, create presentation versions of those. So I'm going to go to Threads Create, because it's what we call presentation quality contours, and just say, actually I'll have them in dark grey. Press OK. And I'm now going to just annotate those. So I'm going to annotate by strike line up my scale so the text isn't too small. And just strike through there, through there. Okay, so there's our contours annotated. Now then. What I'm going to do now is look at a gradient shaded version. This is a brand new tool that we've just introduced. So to start off with, right click models and come down to this new option that says gradient. And I'm going to select the, the 250 mil gridded surface that we've already generated. And I'm just going to call this one gradient shaded. Um, I'll explain why in a minute, but I'm going to basically be draping a point grid over this and using this code spot level for the time being. So if I click this new model, what Enforce has done, it's draped a five meter grid over that site and the height has been swapped for the gradient as a percentage in that exact location. If I open that model, 
I'm going to do first of all is turn off the contours because they're kind of irrelevant. Turn off the model because that's irrelevant. So let's start by showing what the gradient shading can look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the DTM menu, click on DTM defaults, and I'm going to load in a gradient shading schema, which has already been set up. So it's basically just percentages with different colors. Nothing's going to happen yet because I haven't turned on the shading. So if I turn on the shading, you get that. Okay, now there's certain areas of white there where the triangles are actually steeper than what have been set, so they're basically just shaded in white. Okay, so that's just gradient shaded it. But the gradient shading as it stands at the moment, that's only going so far. What I want to do is create an arrow to indicate the direction of the fall and also change the color of that arrow based on the gradient. So what I'm going to do is turn off the shading. I'm just going to click on a point, go to coding. So we've got the height turned on, yes, I don't need the height. So I'm going to turn on, go on to symbol, and enable that. And I'm going to load into the project a suitable symbol, one that I've made already. Okay, here it is. So essentially, it's just a, an arrow orientated from the back with a solid fill. So, so basically, in AutoCAD, this would be a block with a solid fill. I'm going to load that one in. Press OK. So it's a one-point scaled symbol. Arrow 1. And under Fields, I should add a field S to scale it. And we'll start with a default of 1. Now, under the Symbol tab, I'm going to enable this new option that says Height Shading. And what that means is, in a minute, when I enable it, it will change the color. You can see the pen box is disabled now, or grayed out. It will now change the color of the arrow to the same as the gradient. And because each point, as you can see, has got an A on it, that indicates the angle. That was done when I actually created the model. If I now let it redraw, you get a load of arrows. So I turn off the markers, i.e. the point styles. Those arrows now depict the direction of the fall. Okay. Uh, all I need now to do to color those based on the same as the gradient shading is go back to the DTM tab, click on DTMs, and enable the gradient shading there. And now we have that. Okay. Obviously, we need to communicate what those values mean. So under the Tools menu, go back to Shading key. Um, so before I do that, I'm just going to up my scale so I don't have to worry about uh, things being too small. So do that again. Let's go to Shading key. So put some values that I know work in here. Let's put that to white. Interval every five. Decimals say one. Units in percent because it's percentage gradient. Press OK and drop that down like that. There we go. So there we have our gradient shaded model. Um, what would be nice though is to put the contours behind that. So if I do Alt B and put the gradient, put the grid behind there, you get that. So you kind of got the best of both there. And all I need to do now is just export that into AutoCAD. So we go home, export standard, save that. It doesn't need to be 3D obviously. Press OK. And now when I open that in AutoCAD, it's just opened off screen, so I'll just drag it over. There we go. So, arrows and the contours, exactly as they were in Enforce, but in AutoCAD. That concludes our video.